Today, I'm going to be talking about finishing games. I'll talk about my own game dev journey and how finishing games led to me becoming a full-time game developer, and I'll add in some practical tips that will help you finish your game dev projects. But first, we need some coffee. All right, so here's the thing. When I first started making games, I was following online tutorials, I was looking stuff up on forums and troubleshooting errors, and I was just kind of messing around to see what was possible and what was within my skill set to make. And I think that that's fine and that sort of experimentation is necessary when you're starting out learning game development. But if I could go back, I would change the trajectory of a lot of my earlier projects so that they were more goal oriented because this is what happened to me. Once I learned enough of the basics, I started creating game prototypes and maybe you can relate. I would have an idea for a game, build out the very basics of it, get it working as a proof of concept, and then I would have another idea. So I would drop my current project and move on to the next one. This is what's known as shiny object syndrome. Wikipedia defines shiny object syndrome as the situation where people focus all attention on something that is current and trendy, yet drop this as soon as something new takes its place. This is what happens when you get stuck into this cycle. You end up with hundreds, maybe thousands of hours of game development with nothing to show for it. That's what happened to me. This is what kills most game developers. A lot of you are probably in the same position I was in, doing game dev as a hobby in my free time as a solo developer with no obligations to anyone else. This means you can work on whatever you want, whenever you want. That makes it very easy to get distracted and begin working on new projects or leaving old projects to die. So here's my encouragement for you today. You need to make smaller games and finish them because Finishing is a skill that you can cultivate and strengthen. Just like going to the gym to build muscle, finishing is a skill that takes reps to strengthen. The more you see things through, the easier it will be in the future, and you'll be able to finish larger projects. But just like anything, the beginning is the toughest part. And let me tell you how that played out for me. You see, I reached a major pivot point in my career when I realized that finishing is a skill. I was making websites professionally, but I wanted to do game dev full time. After creating a million prototypes and leaving dozens of projects half-baked, I realized that I needed to start finishing games. And that's when my game dev journey took off. So I decided to sit down and write out the absolute simplest game concept that I could think of. It was going to be the smallest scope, the absolute stupidest game idea that I could think of, but I was going to see it through all the way to the end, give myself one month to make it, and then by the end, it was going to be done and published on the Android App Store. That was my plan. Let me show you how simple this game was. There's only one control. You tap the screen to get this ball to jump. You have to time it to avoid obstacles and see how high you can get, and that's it. I spent a little bit of time adding colors and stuff in the background to make it look a little better, but my goal was to have everything from start to end finished and published within one month. And do you know what happened in that one month? I learned more in that one month than I had in countless months before that. Because what happened was instead of just concentrating on developing the core gameplay, I was pulled out and I had to create this polished product, even though it was so small, it had to be rounded out, which meant I needed music, which I hadn't done before. And if you have music and sound effects, you need settings so that people can adjust the volume and toggle it on and off. So I had to add that. I had to add a menu so that people could access the main game versus the settings. I added in advertisements um, and learned how to sign up with Google AdMob and show ads in my game. 
I had to look up how to publish on Android, fill out all of the the Google Android dashboard information. I had to come up with a title and a description for my game. I had to pay the $30 Android developer fees so that I could publish on there. Um, there's so much like, like localization options and like content ratings and a lot of hoops to jump through with that publishing process. And just all of it was so valuable to me. I finally had something that I could add to my online portfolio. It was done, it was complete, it was published, people could go get it and download it. It felt amazing. And I didn't stop there either. I kept going, but this time for iOS. I came up with a very simple game concept. This time I created a game trailer, added in-app purchases, paid Apple's $100 developer fee, figured out the crazy process for signing and exporting iOS builds from Xcode, and launched on the iOS App Store. And the ball kept rolling. I continued to start and finish projects. Now you can look at these games and you can say, these games are nothing special. You know, you can go to Twitter or Reddit and you can see games that are way better than these games. But that's not the point. I, I know that the games that you can find on social media are much better than the ones that I made, but the point is that they were done. If you look at Reddit or Twitter, 75% of those games aren't gonna see the light of day because people get stuck in the weeds and they don't know how to finish. My muscle that I've been strengthening to finish games is getting stronger, so I know I can finish games, but it takes baby steps. These finished projects allowed me to drastically change my career path too. Now I'm a full-time game developer, and I love it. I might make a video about that in the future, but for now, let me give you some very practical tips that you can use to finish your own games. Number one, keep an idea journal. This can be handwritten in a notebook or typed out somewhere online, but ideally it's something that is instantly accessible for you. This way, whenever you get that great idea for your next game, you don't need to instantly sit down at the computer and start prototyping a new project. You can simply write down your idea and come back to it once you finish your current project. Number two, set a deadline. Artists can continue adding or modifying their artwork an infinite number of times. Having a time constraint is an easy way to make sure you are done. Maybe you don't need to add 10 more levels to your game. Maybe you don't need 15 more features before you decide to publish. Maybe you need to cut out adding multiplayer to your game. You definitely should cut out multiplayer from your game. Number three, cut your scope. Here's what I would suggest you do. Write out all of the features that you want to have in your game and then I want you to cut that list in half. Then I want you to take that list and cut it in half again. Now you have a good scope that you have a high chance of finishing. Make your next project the absolute most simple idea to carry out. Number four, never have a 0% day. I got this idea from David Whaley, the developer who made the first tree. Even if you just open up your project to change a color or something else super minuscule, if you work on your project every day, it will never stagnate and die. The fifth and final tip, enter a game jam. Game jams are my jam. They are amazing for creating small projects that must get finished. It's probably the best way to start growing your finishing muscle. I know this sounds like a lot of work. It is. Especially if you're working a full-time job or if you're going to school. Something I've found is that everything in this life worth doing requires hard work, but it's totally doable. If I could go back to a younger version of myself and tell them one thing, it would be to stop starting and start finishing. Well, that's it for today. Do that thing where you hit the thumb and the thing that tells you when I make more videos. You can follow me on Twitter. I post GIFs about my current project on there a lot. Anyway, until next time, uh, I'll see you guys later. Can I just say that there's a little bit of a tear in your crotch? That's fine. Tuck that in. We're good.